Welcome back, Mosaic Church. My name is Kyle Porter. I've got Kyle Worley with me today. We are, uh, we got a lot to talk about. It's a big day. We've got a lot to discuss. I think the question that uh, everybody has been thinking about over the last several weeks, maybe month, Kyle, is uh, what is Mosaic Church going to be doing as we head into the summer? Yeah, jumping right into it, um, <laughs> like the journalist that you are. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, what are we going to be doing during the summer? Well, we're going to be doing what Mosaic is always doing, which is we're going to be looking to cover every inch of Richardson with the good news of the gospel, uh, and uh, we're going to attempt to do that through cultivating life in Christ, life together, and life on mission. I mean, we're going to devote ourselves to scripture and prayer and fellowship when and where we can, and we're going to break bread and um, we're going to sing our songs and pray our prayers, and we're going to look to the Lord. That's what we're going to be doing this summer. Is that the answer you wanted? Yeah, you know, you you uh, you 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 dodge the the, <laughs> the specifics of the question like a a, a veteran, uh, but I'm I'm going to have to pin you down on it. What what are the what are the specifics? Look, like, you know, I I think you and I have both been incredibly encouraged by the way that the people of Mosaic have kind of practiced our, our, our values and our vision over the last two months, even without gathering. And, and I love um, the, the kind of the phrasing that's been used of, even though we're separate, we're united in Christ. And we've seen that play out in, in our homes and in the lives of our people. And that's been so encouraging. So the thing that you just said, I think is what, what people are already bought into. And I, and I think we're all really encouraged by that in terms of, as we head into the end of May and into June, what about Sunday mornings? What about the gathering? That's been so important to uh, kind of the ethos of our church over the last uh, couple of years. What, what is that going to look like as we head into the summer? Yeah, so um, uh, over the last month and a half, this is what the elders and deacons and staff, along with members, have been praying through. Uh, we've been seeking counsel inside and out of the life of the church. And where we've arrived is that we are going to begin in-person gatherings in a very limited way starting Sunday, June 7th. Um, and so on June 7th, we will have our first in-person gathering. It'll be a central location, it'll be inside. Uh, this week we're confirming the information for that, where that location will be. And so hopefully we'll get to announce that to you in the newsletter on Thursday. But we'll be meeting inside um, and it'll be scaled back gatherings. It'll be one gathering, and, uh, on Sundays at 10 a.m., uh, at least for the month of June and very likely into the month of July as well. Um, and uh, the, the, the hope is that those gatherings will be invite specific. We'll invite regions, zones, so to speak, that are representative of our church. Uh, and uh, the reason we'll do that is, is to kind of do some crowd control so that we don't just do a, an open call and then have to turn people away because we want to make sure that we're able to uh, partition out the room in a way that allows for social distancing uh, and for us to gather in a way that's wise and brave, but also safe. Uh, and so that, that's what we're looking at doing. So that, that will start on Sunday, June 7th. And we'll probably, our hope is that it would continue over the course of the summer, certainly a lot of this is contingent on trend lines uh, regarding COVID remaining positive and heading in positive direction. So is that helpful? Is that what you wanted? Yeah, that's, yeah, you, you, you weren't able to, uh, to quite dodge at that time. <laughs> I, uh, I'm super excited about this because, you know, one of the things people have been asking me, I, I got asked the other day by a member, hey, what have you missed most? not about Mosaic Church, but just during the, the pandemic, like what, what has been the thing that's been taken away that's been the most prevalent in your life? And, and for me, my honest answer is Sunday morning gatherings. You know, I, 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 I was already working from home, so that's a little bit different um, for, for some people having to, to be at home. But man, I have missed the, the Sunday mornings of, of being with our people and, and, and singing and, and taking the Lord's Supper. I, I'm curious about when you envision this summer, these are going to be pretty, pretty limited. They're going to be small. They're going to be very different than what we've done. But what do you envision these gatherings being like uh, this summer as, as we, we get together in, in kind of a different way than we've done before? Yeah, um, this is, you know, I, I mentioned this in the sermon uh, yesterday, just talking about what is the church. There are seasons where the church is, like I said, it's like classical music. It's highly structured. You're playing all the right notes in all the right places. And there are seasons where the church is like jazz. There's seasons where the church is more like football, where set piece plays, every play, lots of starts and stops, high structure. 
There are seasons where it's a lot more like soccer, free form and fluid. There are seasons where it's like cooking with a recipe and you follow the instructions to the detail. And there are seasons where it's like cooking with cooking by taste. And this summer is definitely going to be a summer where the church is playing music like jazz. We're playing football or soccer instead of football. We're cooking by taste and not with a recipe. And so when we think about these gatherings, we really want to focus on what we can uniquely do there that we won't uh, that we couldn't uniquely do elsewhere. So over the course of the summer, we'll be complementing the in-person worship services with the digital worship service, both the adults and for Mosaic Kids. And the reason we're doing that is because we know people are in different places on the spectrum of concern, on different places on the spectrum of risk. And so we want to acknowledge that for some, it won't be wise or prudent, no matter how safe we make it, for them to gather on, in person on Sundays when they can. And so because of that, we'll continue to offer these services. Um, and so when we ask the question, what can we uniquely do in person that we can't when we're scattered, we thought, well, we can uniquely sing together with one voice. I don't know about you, but I have really missed singing in corporate worship with one another. Uh, what can we uniquely do? We can receive the Lord's Supper in a way that's embodied, in a way that's personal, in a way that is near and intimate. Uh, and so we'll be focusing on that. Uh, and we'll be praying with one another, with one voice. And so I, I, I got to tell you, one of the hardest and most kind of the saddest moments every week in the digital worship service is when I um, do the benediction, because I'll read it, and I'm so used to hearing the voice of the congregation respond, and it's all I can do to not cry every week when I do the benediction when there's just nothing there. There's no response. Um, and that's formative for us. We're embodied creatures. We're not meant to live uh, in these detached lives. It's one of the reasons why so many of us are feeling Zoom fatigue right now. Maybe even while you watch this video call, which is a recording of a Zoom call, you're thinking, I am tired of looking at screens. And you should be because you weren't created to engage with other people and with the Lord primarily through this medium that you're embodied, you're supposed to be there. And so our corporate worship service will allow for embodied fellowship, corporate singing, the receiving of communion. There, we're, we're planning that these services will be about 30 to 35 minutes. And we're inviting kids to attend as well with their families so that we can worship together. And so these are some things that I'm really eager for, excited for when we think about in-person services this summer. Yeah, it's really good. And if you're trying to take notes on like what, what we're doing and what's going to be allowed and what's not allowed, we're, we're going we're gonna to put everything on the website later on this week. We're going to lay it all out uh, in terms of kind of what the specifics of, of how we envision this going uh, are. Uh, I did want to ask you real quick, Kyle, just about, um, look, there's a thousand different paths that we could have picked here that we could have been led down, that we could have chosen. There's so many different iterations of what a gathering could be. Uh, of what it's been historically for the church, of what it's been historically for Mosaic Church. I, I'm curious, I, I want to hear a little bit about why this is the specific one that we kind of landed on uh, after praying through and talking through and, and seeking counsel from, from other people. Why, why, is it, why is it this one that we kind of landed on? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I think part of it is realizing that as we looked towards the summer, um, rather than be tossed to and fro by different phases of reopening and kind of constantly to every 10 days or so, you know, feeling like, okay, we're going to, here, here, here's the new plan. We wanted to give the people of Mosaic a structure and a plan that was predictable and sustainable over the next few months. I, I know that in these times, it's felt like we were in a sea of uncertainty and we wanted to, as best we could, provide the people of Mosaic with something that they could look at this summer and go, okay, that is where we're headed as a church in terms of what we're doing when we gather. Um, and where we're going. And so um, one of the things that we've really tried to model from the beginning of this is just transparency. It's one of the reasons why we do these Monday videos is just so people can see, hey, this is how we're thinking. And, and if you've been following along with those, if you've been kind of uh, staying in, in touch with our communication, you know, we've been really open and honest about realizing that um, we're learning this as we go. I think that one of my concerns about four or five weeks ago, as I began to think, uh, look towards the summer, was that by and large, we had given the people of Mosaic uh, a, a narrative that was more of a holding pattern. It was like this, hey, we're gonna go back to normal eventually. We don't know when that is. So here's some creative solutions until we go back to normal. And that really, I think, put most people at Mosaic kind of on their heels in terms of just waiting for a product to be delivered, a return to normal. 
but I actually don't think that that's what God is inviting us into in this season. I don't think it's the need or the opportunity. I think the Lord is inviting us into a reconsideration and a renewal of what our life together as a church looks like. I think we've already seen and tasted of that. And so as we went to the summer, we wanted to see okay, what could we do? What kind of plan could we put in place that acknowledges the realities of our current moment, but also bravely ask the question of how might God use this season to renew us? And so that's why we chose this path. Obviously, it was framed by the unique realities of our congregation, that we have a abundance of children. Um, and so uh, one of the reasons why we chose this was because we felt like the unique makeup of our church, because of our, uh, our, our view of hyper-locality, of being a church that's committed to this city, we chose this model as opposed to maybe more open or more narrow models, because we felt like you could model to our community what a wise, safe, healthy, and bold institution could look like right now. Um, and we wanted to acknowledge that there's a diverse spectrum of concern in the life of our church. And I feel this very personal. I mean, many of you know that for my home right now, um, the, uh, the question of COVID-19 is a very personal reality. As we think about my wife's health and um, her pre-existing condition uh, regarding lung disease. And so with that being the case, uh, we want to be extremely careful and extremely mindful. Uh, about the diverse spectrum of concern that exists at Mosaic. And I, I want to say this above all things. I haven't said it yet, and I'm, maybe we'll get to it, Kyle, but let me say it here. This could be an opportunity right now, this week, and what we're doing. There will be people who feel differently about this. Some will feel like our plan is too narrow. Some will feel like our plan is too open. And it's an opportunity for us to pursue unity and humility with one another. And I actually think that maybe part of what the Lord is doing in the midst of this season is inviting us into a kind of charity, unity, and humility with where we're at um, in terms of the politics of this or in terms of the economics of this or in terms of the execution of this, that he's preparing us for what I saw in 2016 to be one of the greatest dividing years in the life of the church, which was an election year. And so I don't think it's any coincidence that God in his providence is inviting us to chart this path that we've chosen with unity and humility in the face of November 2020, when we will be tempted to be divided in ways that we have not been tempted to be divided yet. And so that's a little bit of what's on my heart as I think through just the path that we chose and, and how we got here. So, yeah, that's good. And I kind of, I just want to reiterate kind of the process of going through this. I mean, you know, we, we don't, we don't know what we're doing because nobody knows what they're doing uh, on, on how to kind of map out what a church should do in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we've read a ton. We have um, talked a ton. Uh, we've been in prayer. Um, we've talked to our deacons. We've talked to, uh, we've, we've sought counsel from, from uh, other members. Uh, I know that I, I, I called a group of moms to kind of talk through some of the kids stuff, which is, incredibly intimidating, uh, an incredibly intimidating thing to do. Uh, but it's so helpful. And, and I just want to uh, commend all those people, staff, deacons, uh, the members of Mosaic. Uh, they've had a, a ton of uh, grace for this decision, a ton of um, flexibility and provided a ton of wisdom that on stuff where maybe, uh, you know, our elders were like, ah, we don't, we don't really know what direction to go in here. And there's just been a ton of um, Christ infused wisdom from those people ar around our church. And that is a, that's a good gift. Not every church, um, I, I would say necessarily has that from their people. And so I just want to commend uh, our people for their faithfulness um, to the Lord uh, to be able to provide that wisdom and, and just their graciousness with one another. And that's something that I know we both hope uh, continues long uh, into the future uh, with all this stuff going on. Um, okay, let's move this forward a little bit, Kyle. Uh, what can people expect for the remainder of this week? Because this is something we're going to be talking about all week. This, is, this has been the kind of the, uh, you know, I, I would say it's entering into a different season of this pandemic. It's not yeah. Uh, it's not coming out of it. It's not the other side. It's, it's nothing like that, but it's definitely for us an inflection point within the pandemic. So what can people expect for the remainder of this week until uh, we get to, uh, to your sermon on Sunday? Yeah. So um, this week, uh, every, if you're a member of Mosaic Church, 
uh, you should expect a call from one of the elders um, of Mosaic Church. If you don't get a phone call, you can feel free to give me a call, um, and uh, I would be happy to talk to you. But you should get a phone call by Sunday at 2 o'clock. So that's kind of the timeline we've set. The reason we want to do that is that we're a church where we've said from the beginning, we want our pastors to be in proximity to our people. And we want to be able to uh, talk to people specifically about this. And so you're going to get phone calls. Uh, you're, if, you, if they leave a voicemail and you feel like, listen, I, I'm good. Like, I don't have any questions. I feel like I understand what we're doing. You don't have to call back. They'll probably tell you that in the voicemail. Um, but if you do have questions, then you can ask them. Um, we, we don't have anything to hide. Uh, we feel like we've tried to honor the process here and try to come up with a plan that is healthy and sustainable. But you can expect a call from an elder this week if you're a member at Mosaic on Thursday. Um, uh, what will go out in the newsletter and will be updated on the web page will be a much more detailed account of what this will look like, along with some safe practices to make sure that our gatherings on those Sundays. Um, are set up effectively. So we'll give you kind of, there'll be like some frequently asked questions that'll be in the newsletter, that'll be on the website in the form of a blog, and it will be on the COVID-19 page that we have set up. Uh, and hopefully this will get more into the weeds and the details. It would really bless us for you to be able to look through that. I know that, I know that we've been doing a lot of communication this time and we've really tried to be wise and pick our shots. But the newsletter this Thursday and the information that it will contain will be incredibly important for navigating the summer. And so it would be a real blessing if you would just take a moment and read through that, talk about it with the people in your household, and just be on the same page. That would be a tremendous gift to us uh, in a week where we have a lot of communication. And so that'll go out on Thursday in newsletter form. It'll be updated on the website. On Sunday morning, I'll repeat some of it in an announcement, but it'll be too many details for us to get through on just like a Sunday morning announcement. And so there'll be a member meeting, a Zoom member meeting at 2.30 on Sunday, May 24th, that's this coming Sunday. Um, and uh, we'll put out the information. It'll be in the newsletter. It will also be posted that Sunday on the Facebook group. Uh, for the member meeting, you're not under any obligation to be there. It's not a requirement for you to attend, but it's an opportunity for you to jump in, hear a little bit more about what's going on this summer, hear a little bit more about our heart. It will be a lot of doubling down on what you've heard in this video and in the newsletter, but there'll be also an opportunity to just ask questions and talk through things. Um, and so hopefully uh, through all of that, uh, and then on Monday, May 25th, we'll do another one of these videos and it will, uh, we'll talk through uh, how you can register uh, because, and that's something we didn't mention, but which I probably should say that way you're not thrown off by it, but we will be asking for registration for these services over the summer. Uh, and the reason for that can feel weird. I get it. It feels weird to me to ask, um, but uh, the reason for that registration is that we think that's what a wise institution will do right now uh, to bless our city and to do due diligence to make sure that if something were to happen, if somebody were to get sick uh, afterwards, that we would be able to uh, contact the relevant people and to know these are the people that were there. Uh, and so that will all be available um, starting May 24th, May 25th. So. Yeah, that's good. I, you know, some people might be wondering, like, okay, you guys keep talking about all these things so many different times. Uh, why are you doing that? And I think it's, I think it's twofold. One, not everybody sees everything, and so we want to, we want to be able to get stuff out to everybody in 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 different ways, whether that's on the website, in a sermon, on this call, uh, different uh, different areas like that. And then two, it's just a lot of information. And, and even as we talked about it internally, it was like, oh my gosh, I need to pause. I need to come back to this. I need to pause. I need to come back to this. So we just, we, we want to um, take this whole week to map everything out. We're not going to be hollering about this for the next, you know, two months. It's going to be generally this week and then we'll kind of move into this this next season um so yeah i just wanted to kind of uh, address that before uh we end this let's end this kyle uh this way if people are and there's going to be people totally totally understandably so that are like hey, i just uh for one reason or the other I, I i can't i can't do a sunday morning i can't be at a gathering even if it's smaller even if uh, we're doing mass or whatever, and we totally understand that. We, yep. we, want you to, we want you to hear us say like, that's okay. You're still, a, you're still a part of Mosaic Church. You're still a member of Mosaic Church. You're still a part, uh, more importantly, of the family of God. Um, but if that's true uh, of a family or of a person, 
Um, what are some ways, what are some other ways that, that maybe people can participate in the life of Mosaic Church this summer? Yeah, and I think, and this is one of the reasons why, like Kyle said, we're going to shout about the gatherings for the next seven days, because after that, I want to start talking about what we, what we are always doing the other six days of the week. We have to talk through some of the information about what we're going to do on Sunday, because it's important, and our gathered life is particularly significant for the life of any church, and our church in particular. But I will say this, most of the Christian life doesn't happen when we're gathered on Sunday mornings. And the, the things that I'm most excited about in the life of Mosaic Church, guess what? They happen outside of our gatherings on Sunday mornings, okay? And you know this because we've done evangelism trainings and prayer nights and uh, set up gospel communities. Why have we done all this? Because we think that God calls us to go out and to live what we have done together in worship out in the life of the world. And we have a, plenty of opportunities to do that this summer. So let me just mention a few of them. One, gospel communities. Um, gospel communities, John McHale has given clear instruction to GC leaders about how they can begin to kind of open up with wise, safe, and healthy practices. But if you're in a GC, continue to be creative with how you connect with one another, how you encourage one another, how you pray for one another, and how you engage with your neighbors around you. And so GCs are an incredible opportunity. If you're not in a gospel community and you want to be in a gospel community, email John McHale jmichael at mosaicrichardson.com. You can find it on the staff page. He would love to talk with you about what a gospel community is and how you can be involved in one. Book clubs. Maybe you're not in a GC and you're thinking, I don't want to transit, try to do that over the summer because that it, it could be weird. My schedule's a little crazy. Well, we're doing book clubs this summer. There's five of them. Antonia's leading one. I'm leading one. John McHale's leading one. Max is leading one. Stephen Clardy is leading one. We're doing book clubs because every summer I know people are like, man, I want to read a good book this summer. And I feel like summer reading is just kind of a part of our culture. And so we figured, well, let's get some great books. So we have picked five incredible books for people to read together. And we have staged those at different times. And so I am sure there's a book club that works with your schedule. There's one that's meeting over lunch, one that's meeting on the weekend, one that's meeting in the morning, one that's meeting in the evening. There's opportunities. And the goal for that isn't that it would just be another thing, but that it would give you an opportunity to read a good book and then to jump in discussion with other people in a way that's decentralized and informal. And so maybe that's something that you'd like to do. And then lastly, prayer nights and trainings. We have a prayer night this Wednesday night, and it starts off a cadence where every Wednesday night, from this Wednesday night indefinitely, you can expect either a prayer night at 830 or a training call at 830. So this Wednesday night, the prayer night is praying for our Muslim neighbors during Ramadan. It's an incredible opportunity. Jump in from 8.30 to 9. They're praying for, there's a group praying from 8.30 to midnight. So you can jump in at any time. Maybe you want to pray the whole time. That would be great. I'll be there from 8.30 till 9. And I would love for you to come and to pray with me for our Muslim neighbors during Ramadan. Um, the next week, we'll have a training. And then there's, over the summer, prayer nights and trainings on family discipleship. Uh, and so I'm really excited about that, uh, that we will continue to get to pray together every Wednesday night, and then we'll do trainings. We have Mike Johnny talking about the Father's Heart for Fathers one Wednesday night in June. We have Caroline Smiley talking about union with Christ and motherhood uh, for moms in June. We've got Cassie Bryant and Matt McCauley. Um, these are just incredible voices that we're going to be uh, having jump into video calls so that we can resource around family discipleship in a time when our families are spending more time with one another than they have. And so we want to resource meaningfully around that. So those are just some things uh, that, that are going on this summer for us to continue to cultivate our life in Christ together on mission when we're not gathered. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, as always, um, th those are things that are invitation, not obligation. We know that people are, um, <clears throat> there's been, you know, fatigue and weariness and uh, we would love to invite you into those things. But um, there, there's no obligation to, um, to, to do any of that, uh, especially uh, the digital stuff that, that, can, get, uh, that can get wearying. Um, okay, that's a ton of information. Uh, thank you for sticking with us. We're going to continue to repeat it throughout the week. Like Kyle said, you'll get an elder call. You'll get an email later this week. Uh, there'll be a member meeting on Sunday. We're, we're going to continue to to push that out uh, throughout the week. We're incredibly excited uh, about being able to gather in some form uh, later on uh, it, it, you know, in this summer. And uh, we've just, we've missed that a ton. We love you guys. 
we're grateful for you. We pray for you often. I know we write that a lot, but I wanted to say it as well. Um, so thank you for um, just all the ways that you reflect uh, the Lord uh, to us. And uh, we just want to uh, encourage you to continue uh, to be faithful to one another and to uh, the Lord as you move forward into, uh, into this summer. Bless you.